Hello fellow blenderers, this is Peter here with PM Designs. In this video I'm going to show you the first method of making tentacles. Very easy to do, very easy to animate. Um, comparing the two methods, this is the first method. This one has a floor, which the second method doesn't have, but it has something that this, it has an advantage, which the second method doesn't have. So I'll show you um, all of it. I'll let you know everything so that you can decide which one you want to follow. And I'll upload the second method as soon as I can. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to let you know now, I have a Suzanne model up here. She's for later. Um, so back to the making the tentacle. I'm going to add in, it. first let's add in a curve. doesn't really matter which order. But I'm going to add a Bezier curve. And I'm going to, whoops, and I'm going to add a mesh. Um, you can use any mesh you want, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to use another Suzanne, another monkey. Um, just because it gives a nice texture to the tentacle. So she is going to be my tentacle. So I'll call her tentacle. Okay, I'm just going to hide her for a moment. So now I'm just going to show you something. I'm going to do something wrong, um, which you may encounter this problem yourself, and so how to fix it. So the best way to do this is to make sure that one end of your Bezier curve, or whatever curve you're using, is aligned with the origin point of that curve. Not the 3D cursor, but that curve's origin point. If I move it, you see the origin point moves as well. So tap into edit mode, and I want one of these ends to be aligned with the, with the origin point. It doesn't matter which, because it's easy to fix, but I'm just going to show you how to fix it if, it if it ends up wrong. So I'm going to move mine over like this. Just get that roughly lined up there. So now that end is aligned with the origin point. Bring back my tentacle. So the only thing you need to make sure of is that your tentacle origin point and your curve origin point are at the same location. If, if you find that your your object is going off all over the place, that's because the origin point is off or because the curve has been moved. The, the curve's origin has been moved. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of modifiers to my um, Suzanne model here. Let me just shade it smooth. Uh, the first one is a screw and the second one is going to be curve, surprisingly. If I now select my Bezier curve, you see that my object has popped over there. That's the problem that I wanted to show you. It's easy to fix. Select my curve, tab into edit mode, press A to select all, right click and switch direction. Okay, so that's back over there now. So my curve, so my curve, the deform axis is X. So I want my screw modifier to deform on the X axis as well. So now if I bring this, oh, I didn't apply, I didn't apply my transforms when I rotated it, sorry. So now if I start to screw this up, screw this out, screw, if I start to screw Suzanne, um, this happens. And there we go. That is the basis of this method, making the, the tentacle grow using the screw thing here. Okay. Um, you basically just use the screw and you can use the angle. We'll talk about those in a moment and the iterations we'll talk about in a moment as well because um, at the moment you can't really see it. Bring back my big Suzanne over here and go into my Bezier curve, tab edit mode, all and X, delete those vertices. Okay, and my screw is just going to go there for the moment. And now I want to draw these tentacles. That's the whole point of this is being able to draw tentacles anywhere. It's very easy. So I'm going to select this draw tool in the curve edit mode. Select the draw tool, not annotate, draw. And you want it to be on surface up here, not cursor, surface. So now I can draw on any surface. I'm going to draw, um, just do something like that. So as you can see, I've drawn a lovely curve all over Big Suzanne's head. So now my curve is, has, sorry, now my tentacle has popped to that location and is following the curve, which is nice. Um, all I have to do to make it stick more tightly, sorry, all I have to do to make it follow the length of the curve is increase the screw, like that. And there we go. I'm hoping this is going to show a mistake in a minute. Okay, it kind of does. So you can see that my tentacle is too straight, yeah? That's easily fixed. So if I bring my, I'll bring my screw back down for a moment, and I'm going to increase my iterations, which is how many times it's screws by 360 degrees in in a set distance. So if I just increase that again, I can bring my iterations down. This is way too big, isn't it? Let's scale 
scale that down a bit and apply that. Okay, so you can see it's following the curve a bit more tight, <clears throat> a bit more tightly now, and it's more rounded. And again, just keep increase, increasing the iterations, bring the screw length down to the end of the curve, something like that, and it looks a, a lot smoother. Okay, so you can see here it's gone a little bit crazy. So if I just hide my tentacle going to my Bezier curve, tab edit mode. You can see that's because this is too tight here so i could move this vertex down or i could just remove it dissolve that vertex and this one just bring that handle in a little bit and on this one bring that handle in like that so you may have to do a bit of sort of manual fixing if your curve is too tight in some areas but yeah that's that's basically it okay so now i want to talk about the flaw of this the, the problem with this one is that i want my for example i want my tentacle to be tapered at the end which is easily done um, but it presents a problem i'm going to tab into edit mode and find, let me hide my tentacle for a minute i'm going to find the end vertex okay i'm also going to turn on proportional editing because it means i can affect some of the others i'm going to make it connected only so i don't affect this one before i affect this one for example bring in my tentacle and now if I hold alt and press s you can see I can start to scale that down if I increase the size of my uh, proportional editing area of effect I can get a much more tapered tentacle something like that so and then if I want to go down to the bottom one here which I can't see this one I could alt s and move my mouse away and make that one much fatter if I wanted to so that is how we can get them tapered not difficult but it doesn't animate like that. The vertex, the vertices are set sizes. So as this, as the screw modifier passes by that vertex, it just matches that size. So if I were to bring the screw back down here, all the way, at this point, the end of my tentacle is not tapered. So that is the major problem with this method, um, that it will stay fat at whatever location it is until you get to the vertex that you have made smaller and then it will be small. Not really much of a way to hide that but the only way um, you could do it is just to animate it very quickly so people don't notice. Maybe you just want to have these as stationary tentacles so then again it's not a problem because people won't see the like fat part of it. Okay so another problem with this but not so big we can fix this easily. When I So at the moment I've got my screw angle set on 360 if I bring my screw back down to let's say 0.1, it's got the four, it's got six iterations, and each one is doing 360. So then as that extends out, it's like a spring, which doesn't look great. So the way to fix that is you have to keyframe. If you're going to keyframe your screw length, yeah, so you start here and your tentacle grows up, or you, whatever, then you need to keyframe your angle as well. So I'm just going to do that so you can see. I'm going, to keep, I'm going to put my screw down to 0.1, press I to keyframe that. And at the beginning here, I'm going to set my angle down to like 10 and keyframe that, 10 degrees. And then if I just go to the end and I'm going to set my angle at 360, keyframe that. And my screw, I don't know, I can't remember what it was, so I'm just going to do it manually. Back up to 2.6 and keyframe that. So now as it grows it will twist and sort of unwind as well so it doesn't all bunch up at the bottom and it looks a little bit more natural so you can just sort of play with that until you get the the right angle that you want to start with and finish with so that's the flaw with this one is that it can't be tapered at the end of the tentacle but the advantage with this one compared to the second method is that you can move the tentacle around and animate that um, so I'll show you how to do that right now. I'm just going to hide my tentacle for a moment, get back on my Bezier curve, tab into edit mode, I'm going to select my whatever vertex you want, but I'm just going to select this one for now. Stick my cursor there, add in an empty plane axis. And so you would have to do this for any part that you want to move. So maybe you want to call your um, you want to call them call your empty something that you can remember. Hook, I'm just going to call this end hook or hook end, whatever. Shoot, select my Bezier curve, tab into edit mode, add a modifier, which is a hook modifier, and choose my object as this hook, and don't forget to assign. So now, 
when I move this hook, if I can select it, the curve will follow, which means the tentacle will follow. So that means that can be animated. It doesn't stretch with the curve. You'd have to you'd have to animate the screw on that. But it means that so if you go in and you put hooks at every vertex where you want to animate it, you could get quite a nice animation going. And also with these empties, they can you can rig them. You can put bones to connect them so you could turn it into a, a proper rig there. So that's that's the advantage of this method compared to the second method. And the other thing you might want to do is add a subdivision modifier, but I think if I do it now, my computer will explode. Yeah, and that just makes it look a little bit noise, a little bit, and that just makes it look a little bit nicer. You. Instead of using Suzanne, because I use Suzanne so we get all these extra lumps and bumps in there, you could just use a circle or whatever shape you want. And then when it comes to the shader, you could add in some displacement to create this kind of like twisty um, whatever effect. Um, speaking of shaders, if you like the shader that I the showed you at the beginning, I am going to make a video about that soon. Uh, I'm not sure when, so you might want to subscribe and then I'll show you how to do that lovely slimy veiny shader. Um, yeah, so if you found that useful, please drop a like. If not, please let me know why. Thanks very much.